So you're probably here because you want to know the right settings for the cob. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite as simple as that. I can show you exactly how to set up the cob. But you'll have to um, bear with me and try to understand each of the various stages involved in um, making this setup work for you in your particular situation and with your intake manifold. So try to uh, pay attention to everything that I'm saying here because um, it's quite important. Chances are you've bought this manifold from 11th Hour Industries, but it doesn't really matter where you've bought it. The point is um, that you need to adjust your carburetor according to your particular air filter and your manifold. Uh, and the, um, the way in which the manifold diverges in which it's uh, constructed will matter to you. So let's start at the beginning and ask ourselves why would we want to carry out this modification? Well firstly, the most obvious, most desirable uh, thing um, which, we'll, which we'll want to um, achieve is uh, improved performance of the stock or um, standard setting. And that's a perfectly valid thing to expect. Um, these uh, motorcycles were constructed in the late 1970s and early 1980s with a view to achieving uh, fuel efficiency. So you get maximum uh, fuel mileage per gallon, but you don't necessarily get the greatest power. So you kind of sort of expect a few more um, horsepower out of this conversion. Furthermore, those uh, carburetors that it came with were um, pretty good. They were CV carburetors, but uh, chances are that by now it's 2021, 40 years or more later, they're damaged and you need to do something about them. So whether that's the, um, the carburetor holders, the carburetor rubbers, or the carburetor itself where the um, air screws have been damaged by somebody over tightening them or trying to adjust them, trying to get them into, into adjustment and failing. So you, it's quite famous so you can't get the, um, the parts to tune these carburetors, you just can't get the full set of um, pilot jets and main jets to tune the main CV carburetors with these bikes. And finally, the, another quite, quite valid reason is uh, simplicity, you want to simplify the um, fueling system in this bike. So these are all quite, quite good reasons to uh, switch over the 2 to 1 intake. But despite the fact that these are good reasons, it doesn't necessarily mean it will be easy to do this. So uh, bear, do bear in mind that um, this will take you a little time to get it sorted out. It won't take you five years necessarily. And uh, I'm not having a go at anyone here because I do, I do enjoy uh, learning things about motorcycles myself. But I can get you set up on this in about a week or so, you know, if, as long as you know the um, Know the principles of how this works it's really rather simple so let's move on the two in one into one manifold what is it okay you buy it from um, from um, 11th hour industries or you get a man to buy it and the way it works is he has himself a uh, you know a, K a kz or kz 400 or 440 cylinder head and he bolts two uh, generic sort of um, carb holders to it. He removes the, the, uh, the rubber from his carb, hold carb holders, leaving just the steel or just the aluminium. And he constructs his manifold from that. So when he ordered it, he's constructed it from um, from an actual setup like that, so from, from pieces of pipe. And it's quite important to realize that um, it is uh, made up of sections of pipe. So. This is something that bolts directly to the cylinder head and it's constructed in order to allow you to use a BM34, McCuny BM34 or an imitation, which is perfectly fine, carburetor. So it'll have 40 millimeters, it'll be 40 millimeters in diameter on the intake side. So you need to choose a rubber that holds the carburetor to this uh, manifold unit. And the most important point, and this is the point in my video really, is um, it's really important to um, to work with, to understand this, is that you need to do something to it. You need to work on this manifold. You can't just buy it and bolt it onto your thing, onto your rust and dead. Sure, it will work. It'll work for a while. It won't work very well at all. And this is because of factors uh, relating to Bernoulli, the Bernoulli principle and turbulence. 
So when you have a fuel-air mixture being sucked through the intake manifold, you don't want any obstructions in it. And this manifold you buy, which is constructed from a piece of pipe, has a lot of obstructions in it of a very peculiar nature. And it's important to bear in mind they have two um, inflection points on each of these. So you need to you need to wear them down. You need to really break them down. And this I'm going to show you this on, um, on the next page here. So this is what it looks like when you buy the uh, two into one into intake manifold. On this side here, you attach your carburetor. And on here, and here, it attaches to your cylinder head by means of two bolts. Ideally, use two Allen bolts. So here you have two, uh, two Allen bolts, and there you have another two Allen bolts. In addition, what you want is your cylinder head to be completely flat on this side, completely flat. So if you don't know this already, I suggest you look up um, cylinder head skimming with sandpaper on YouTube. If you look at those videos, you will get a perfect flat edge using a piece of glass and sandpaper in order to flatten your cylinder head. And once you've done that, and this is important, do exactly the same with this manifold. Because you want this as flat as possible to completely eliminate the possibility of vacuum leaks when, you, when you're trying to set this up because vacuum leaks will really upset the whole process okay so let's move on this is what it looks like from the outside look how look how smooth and nice it is you see just like that smooth and nice perfect okay let's move on this is what it looks like inside you have two sections of pipe here each of these bolt onto the uh, cylinder head and then this is the, the bit that I want to show you. You have blocked off bits. Each of these has two right angle sections. Here, here, and here. They're moving a sort of curve because that's all it is really. It's just a curved piece of pipe which has been welded onto two straight pieces of pipe. These are pretty serious and so are those over here. You need to break these down, okay? So if you look at videos of how uh, roof tiles lift up from houses, it's exactly the same process as here. You have turbulence. Turbulence lift through these tiles. Here, you have turbulence creating obstruction to the flow of fuel air mixture to the cylinder head. And this is absolutely disastrous when you're trying to set up your uh, VM34 carburetor here. So all of this has to be smoothed out, okay? It doesn't have to be uh, perfect, it just has to be smoothed. Air does it doesn't like to uh, move around sharp edges. It likes to move around smooth edges. So make it all smooth. And for this, you need a Dremel or a cheap Dremel equivalent. It doesn't really matter what you use. Just break down everything. Okay. So you've already got this flat now. You've got the cylinder head flat, and you've broken down quite aggressively all of these really sharp blocks here. And they really do move into the uh, sections of pipe. So you need to break them all down. You need to knock them all down. Okay. You need to grind them all down. A very important point here, or else you'll never get it set up properly. Okay, let's move on. Okay, this is just to show you basically what happens when you have uh, turbulence. Turbulence can be a good thing or a bad thing. In this case, it's a it's a bad thing if you haven't knocked down these um, these flat edges here. So you've got an inflection point here, and you've got an inflection point there, and as a result, turbulence create is a is a kind of um, circular form. You get little puffy bits here. <laughs> That's browning the motion or whatever, puffy bits is, is good enough for our purposes, okay? The point being that this is not assisting the flow of uh, fuel-air mixture, right? According to fuel, fluid dynamics, you need to get this as efficient as possible. There's no point having a flowed cylinder head, a ported cylinder head, or having the perfectly dialed-in carburetor if the air-fuel mixture is not flowing uh, through here completely. Okay, your engine is just a pump. That's all it is, it's just a pump. You to get um, a fuel air mixture in, you to pump out the exhaust gases, okay, and it creates force. So, um, yeah, so these arrows just show, basically, um, you have a really thin passage. If you leave it in the standard form, this 11th hour, or wherever you get it from, this manifold, leave it in the standard form, your air fuel mixture has got a very, very thin and narrow passageway to get to your cylinder head. And this is, this is a pretty bad thing, so you have to bear that in mind. You won't be able to dial in this carburetor. I'm going to emphasize this over and over again, okay? You can't do it. You just simply can't do it. It's got right-angled blocks inside it. It's got 
hooky, hooking thing, you know, it's got obstructions which come out like this, right? So why even bother trying to dial in your carburetor if you haven't sorted out this manifold system? So let's move on from here. Okay, I want to tell you that you need to get out your drum. You need to get out your Dremel. You need to get out whatever you need to tungsten carbide drill bits, your burrs, whatever it is, and break down this mess until F F your mixture flows uh, freely through there. Let's move on. Okay, so you've done all of that. Okay, let's move on to your carburetor. So you're pretty, probably pretty keen on knowing which uh, pilot jets do you need to use. How many turnouts do, uh, turns out do they need to be? Do you need to replace the needle jet? So on, so forth. It's action. Just put all of that out of your head. Anything you've seen and heard, just put it out of your head, okay? Because there's a uh, McCune manual. You can download it on the internet and it explains everything. What you do, the first thing, first of all, get yourself a set of pilot jets and get yourself a set of main jets, okay? <clears throat> From that point, after you've choose your, chosen your air filter, you can now start to dial in your carburetor. So the first thing you do with the carburetor is you choose your pilot jet. How do you choose a pilot jet? You need to, your bike needs to be able to run. That means if there are no vacuum leaks and your fuel filter is attached, the bike needs to be able to idle, okay? Just to idle. Your idling is enough. You choose a pilot jet that allows your bike to idle while it's roughly half to three quarters of a turn out on the mixture side. I'm going to repeat myself, okay? Choose a pilot jet that allows you to idle while your bike is mixed, while your carburetor's mixer strew is approximately half to three quarters out. If it's a quarter out or two turns out, it doesn't really matter a huge deal, okay? But what I'm telling you is that the ideal of how this is supposed to work so you can dial in your VM34 um, carburetor, okay? From that point, you need a main jet, which is rich enough to get enough fuel to the system, okay? So that it runs. When you're opening, um, when you're opening up the throttle, your needle jet and your main jet work in unison, right, to, um, to allow the fuel air mixture to enter your um, engine. Okay, the important thing to bear in mind when you're doing all of this, I'm gonna just don't look at this, okay? The important thing to bear in mind is your engine has to be hot. Not hot, but warm. That means you can't just run it around the block, as you may have seen in some other videos or whatever. Just don't do that. Take it out for a ride wherever you are, whatever altitude you're at, whatever climate you, in which you live, the engine has to be warm. This means you take it for a ride for several miles, Okay, if it's idling nicely and your main jet is fine, it's not bogging down and it's not too lean, it's not going up, you know, it's not improving when it's, um, when you have, um, <clears throat> it, you know, less fuel or anything like that. As long as, the, as long as you're doing this when it's fully warmed up, you're not just going around the block, you take it out for a few miles and then you observe, then you can proceed. Okay, let's move on. You're dialing in your VM34 carburetor, you're choosing the switchover. The switchover is an important um, source of clues. So you're looking at your, your, um, your spot plugs all the time. You're looking at whether they look rich or lean. And remember, carburetors are an impre imprecise science, okay? So a little, little rich doesn't really matter a huge deal. But the switchover occurs when the pilot jet switches over to the main jet circuit. This uh, is where you may identify a little stutter um, when you increase the revs in your motorcycle. So between like 2,000, 2,500 um, RPM, you may observe a little stutter and you want to you want to look at that because you don't want it to bog it down. You, want to, you don't want it to, be ex it to be excessive. It will always be there. So it will always be discernible. So that's something to bear in mind. This is when you're tuning in your VM34 carburetor and you're thinking about, is this main jet, is it too rich, is it too lean? Okay, so you've got a VM34 carburetor, chances are it's a fake, it's from China, and it comes with a pretty standard um, needle jet. Now before you change this needle jet, you need to look at the McCune manual, because the McCune manual 
um, states very clearly which um, which needle jets apply to the uh, flat um, flat side carburetors and which to the round side carburetors. The M34 is a round side carburetor, so don't put a Q0 in it, okay? And choose your needle jet, uh, your your main jet needle accordingly. So between um, yeah, between the um, up to about um, half to three quarters or, or one quarter to three quarters of your Red range on this particular bike, KZ400 um, or KZ440. Um, what's really having the most effect upon the um, upon the running of the engine in terms of fuel system is a needle jet height. So you can raise that needle, you can drop it. Um, you can raise that one point, or you can drop it one point. You'll see where I mean. You, you can just um, take out your needle and see um, see where the clip is situated, the circuit that is. Okay. So when you're fine-tuning this carburetor, that's something to bear in mind. You sort out that, and when you're fine-tuning, you look at um, your overall picture, with is it bogging down in the, uh, the red, red zone and so on. So that's the very last point. So when you've done all of this, it does idle nicely, it idles smoothly, and you can adjust it so that, for example, when you take out the um, you take out the mixture screw, mixture screw, it starts to increase in revs so as it leans out. And you're doing all of this, of course, when the engine is warm. You've chosen the main jet, which isn't too rich and too, isn't too lean. And the switchover between main the pilot and main circuits is fairly smooth. You know, you've chosen your, your main jet accordingly to make it fairly smooth, and you've chosen the uh, needle height to make it fairly smooth. This is probably as good as you'll get it, okay? So that's that's fine. So we're moving on to um, the fine tuning of this carburetor. That's um, a story that's, you know, that's completely up to you because at this point the, the bike will work. So um, let's move on from here. So why can't I give you uh, universal settings, I mean, for this um, particular setup? And the answer is, quite simply, there are atmospheric differences between um, different places in the world where somebody lives. So somebody lives in a hot place in America, or they live in the Alps, you know, in the, you know where it's going to be, um, have very little oxygen and so forth. And, or they live in a hot climate, or they live in a cold climate, there will be differences. So I can't just say, okay, use this main jet, use this needle jet, whatever. And furthermore, in this, you know, you need to think about, um, you know, not just the, um, the, the place in which you live, but the, um, the slight differences in uh, manufacturers and materials. And let's say, I want to talk about this this bit here, the air filter type you use. So if, you, if you're looking at a typical sort of YouTube video, thinking about, okay, what type of um, air filter would I use to, um, to, to make this setup work for me? And you'll notice that this type of thing here, some people call it pancake, right? Pancake filter. And the um, air goes this way, straight to the carburetor here. So your carburetor is here. Okay, little cable. It's very into the carburetor here, yeah. but it's going at a 90 degree angle, right? So there is some sort of resistance there. So this is one of the reasons why it's impossible to say, okay, this is you, you need this particular jet or a needle or this particular setup for your carburetor to make this thing work. Because there is some resistance in the system and it, and it probably mimics um, the original for the, the airbox and carburetors. I'm not entirely sure on that, but it's certainly a lot closer than what I have running on my particular bike, which is um, a pod filter. So, yeah, I'll show you what a pod filter crappy fit picture of a pod filter it basically caps onto um, your carburetor and a pod filter has very little resistance very little resistance so you will end up going richer on this pod filter so I can't say okay use this needle jet use that um, uh, pipe jet but what I will say is this when you're choosing your jets and jets are cheap for VM34 carburetors go rich on a needle jet a lot richer than what you may have been led to believe. In fact, go up to 40 and work your way down, all right? Go up to 40 size uh, needle jet to get it to idle line. All you need to do is get it to idle, okay? Then choose, then look at how many uh, turns of the needle out you are in terms of your mixer street. And then go down in, um, in pilot jet sizes. 
So this is a pretty free flowing system here. Okay. And if you want to imitate this system, there is something quite important you need to uh, bear in mind. Here is the opening mouth of a carburetor here. Okay. It's got these um, bits which allow it to idle. It's got these sort of circuits which allow air into there, which enable the idle and the choke circuit to work. And the rubber inside your pod filter has to be cut out to allow this to flow nicely. So again, you don't want any turbulent effects there. You just want it to be straight through. Okay? So I hope this video has helped in setting up this system. There are a few, uh, few things which are important to bear in mind. That is, one, vacuum leaks. This bike is quite notorious for vacuum leaks and they usually occur with the standard CV carburetors which have rubber carb holders which go directly to the cylinder head. When you're setting up the um, two into one manifold, use proper gaskets, cut them out yourself, okay? This is how they work. Get a product called Flexoid. Get a good thick Flexoid paper, cut your gaskets out, cut them out to fit your manifold. Right? You want to cut them out to fit these holes here, and so they um, fit nicely. And when you've cut them out, you use them, and if possible, match the ports on your cylinder head. Okay, so if you know what you're doing, just watch a few um, cylinder head porting videos if you don't, and try and match the size of the gaskets you make with that. Once you've put this together, you need brake cleaner, also called. Uh, There's another name for it anyway, okay. There's um, a brake cleaner. Highly flammable stuff, use it to continually test whether you have a vacuum leak because the worst thing that can possibly happen in this process is that you're trying to uh, tune your carburetors at the same time as you have a vacuum leak. So you're going up and down um, the jet sizes and changing your needle and you're changing your needle, um, uh, needle height, right? You change your needle jet and you're wondering why the ribs go, are going up and down and you think you're tuning it when in fact there's a minute vacuum leak. So you need a very highly flammable uh, substance to help you identify vacuum leaks. You need to spray it directly at every join to see if there's a vacuum leak. Now I do suggest that you look at a few skimming videos, right? Because skimming videos will show you how to get that manifold completely flat along with the uh, cylinder head. So the mating surface between the cylinder head and on this bike the cylinder head looks a bit like this. I'm going to show you. Right, so it flares out here. This is the exhaust. And this is the cylinder head. This is absolutely dead flat. Okay, so have no bones about it. Make sure this is absolutely dead flat. Use glass and sandpaper. Use, uh, cut out the gaskets very carefully. Use glass and sandpaper again on this intake manifold, which you've um, already flowed. So make sure this is all broken down. You don't want this here. And you don't want these catches here broken down. Okay, so these catches go like this normally when you buy it from. Um, from where you buy it. It's up to you, it's your responsibility to knock these down. Now, if you follow these instructions that I give in this video, your bike will run perfectly and you'll get this set up not in five years, but in more like five days. Okay, so the things you need to buy here, things to buy. I'm not going to say VM34 because you know that you need the carburetor already. Okay. You need a Van Hill cable kit. And just this is a really important thing to, to note. This cable kit, this cable, when you're sending up one with a uh, VM34 carburetor, it needs to have some slack in it. You need to have about five millimeters. It sounds like a lot, and it is a lot of slack when you set up your cable, okay? I recommend 
so I'm, this is not obligatory but I recommend that you have a double spring so I, I think that animal springs are slightly better if you have double spring inside the carburetor double up your spring for safety reasons okay let's move on things to buy you already know you need to buy your manifolds you need to buy your flexoid paper gasket paper to cut your gaskets really very simple set of pilot jets how much more simple could this get and a set of mains now you have your tuning set up okay once the tuning is set up you can um you can use um what you have to fine tune it so then you can think about the changing seeing what the effects are of changing the needle height or changing the needle jet to something from a different carburetor for example so I hope this has been of some assistance to you and that you um, are able to uh, get your project on the road running as I've done successfully. If you have any questions that I haven't addressed in this video, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Best of luck to you.